Greetings YouTube, welcome to Sewing for Beginners. In this series you'll learn all the basics you'll need to start sewing your own garments, including various stitches, and learning how to use patterns. All of these things will be broken down into little bite-sized chunks which you can refer back to at any time. In this introduction we will learn how to correctly use our sewing machine. While they're all very similar, no two sewing machines are alike, but I have two to show you and compare. And by the end you should be able to use any kind of sewing machine. But bear in mind that these are both mechanical sewing machines and not computerised. Which means that we select settings by turning dials rather than pushing buttons. In this video we learn how to thread the sewing machine, wind the bobbin and how to properly sew and select settings. Each of these sections will have a timestamp in the description if you need to come back to refer to them later. If you don't want to miss any of these videos in the series, and don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and the artist formerly known as Twitter. But first, let's take a look at some of the things you'll need. A sewing machine. You will also need sewing machine thread. Be sure to get a good quality thread meant for sewing machines. Get either cotton or polyester or a blend of the two. You can get some threads that are okay for hand sewing, but on a sewing machine, they can fray and snap. This is Coates Moon Thread, which is well known for its durability. I recommend this. As well as our sewing machine, we'll need an iron and ironing board. It's important that we press our seams as we go along. This will give us a much neater and more professional looking finish. You may also want to consider a sleeve board for pressing seams within sleeves, trouser legs and other hard to reach places. And a tailor's ham for pressing curved seams. Other things you will need will be some hand sewing needles for finishing or tacking, some pins, thread cutters, tailoring scissors for cutting fabric, pinking shears which are scissors with a jagged edge. This is for cutting fabric that frays easily. You may also want tailor's chalk if you want to make marks on your fabric, either as a stitching guide or for making marks on patterns. They can come in pencils or in these giant plectrums. They usually come in packs in several colours so you can find one that shows up on your fabric. You can also get water soluble marker pens. Here are my two machines which I'll be showing you. On the left is my Singer M2605, which is a more basic machine. On the right is my Singer Heavy Duty, which is more advanced and, as the name suggests, can deal with heavy duty fabric. Although my more basic machine can also do with heavy duty fabric, it just has slightly fewer functions. So let's take a closer look. Each machine comes with a compartment with accessories. This one has a little drawer that opens. This whole section can also be removed, which makes the plate smaller and this is used for sewing hems on smaller items like cuffs. This one has a compartment that pulls away, which also gives us access to our bobbin. And with the front part removed, we have our smaller plate for hemming cuffs. Your machine will come with a variety of accessories. What they are will depend on the machine and whether it's more basic or a more advanced machine. Most machines come with a secondary spool pin. Not all machines come with this, so you might have to buy one separately. Though most, if not all machines, will have a space to put one. You'll find a small hole on the top of your machine towards the back. And this is where we insert the spool pin. The pin will come with a circle of felt which we can place over the pin and this will just prevent the spool from rubbing against the machine. Your machine will also come with spool holders, a small and a large. These are to hold our spools in place on our horizontal spool holder. The holes in the spools come in different sizes. This one is about a centimetre. For spools with the larger holes, we use the small spool holder and it will sit just inside the spool. For spools with a smaller hole, we use the large spool holder, which sits just outside the spool. You can find thread that is wound in two different ways. 
This thread is wound on in a circular motion and it needs to come off in a circular motion. So we place this one on our vertical spool holder. This thread is wound on in a crisscross pattern and it needs to come off in the same way, which is over the spool. So we put this on our horizontal spool holder. If we try to unwind the crisscross thread vertically or the circular thread horizontally, it can cause friction, cause the thread to twist and make it bunch or snap. So make sure you put the right spool on the correct spool pin. The things that will come with your machine as standard are a set of bobbins, either plastic or metal, spare needles, a standard presser foot, a zipper foot, a button foot, some machines come with a required button plate, others don't need a plate and just come with the foot. You will also have a buttonhole foot. This one is for what's called a four-step buttonhole. And this is for what's called a one-step buttonhole. You'll also have an edging guide, an L screwdriver for maintenance. You'll also receive a machine brush, and they usually have a Seaman picker hidden inside. Some machines come with a twin needle, which can be used for decorative stitches or hemming jersey fabrics. These will all be covered in more detail later on in the series. As well as the functions, there are a few differences between the machines. The more basic machine on the left has a front-loading bobbin. The machine on the right has a top-loading bobbin. I'll be showing you the difference between those shortly. Your machine will come with a power cable and foot pedal. They normally come as one. The foot pedal is how we operate the machine. To sew, we push down on the foot pedal. The more we push down, the faster the machine will go. To stop sewing, we release the pedal. We keep our foot away from the pedal when we're not sewing. On many computerized sewing machines, using the pedal is optional. We have a switch where we can adjust the speed and a start stop button to begin and stop sewing. We plug in our machine, switch it on, and we're ready to go. First, we make sure the thread take up lever is at its highest point. This also brings our needle to its highest point. On the side of our machine, we have a hand wheel, which we use to move the needle up and down. We turn the hand wheel to the highest point. Most wheels have notches that line up to show you where the highest point is. This should be the default position for our needle. This machine doesn't have any markings, so I have to watch the lever to see that it comes up to its highest point. First we need to wind the bobbin, so we take our thread and the appropriate spool holder, place these onto the spool pin. First we come under this hook, you should hear it ping into place. And then we want to come around this screw here in a clockwise direction. Our thread should come in underneath and around, so we make a loop. Now we take our bobbin and our thread, and from the inside out, we thread through one of these holes. Making sure our thread is coming out facing the top, we place our bobbin onto this pin, and we push it towards this stopper. This locks the needle in place and stops it from going up and down while we're winding the bobbin. Now the mechanism on your machine might be slightly different to this. There might be another lever. Some machines you have to pull out the hand wheel. But on both my machines this is the same. With our bobbin locked and ready to go, we push down on the foot pedal, keeping hold of the tail of our thread. After it's spun a few times, we can snip off the excess tail and we can put our foot down and continue winding the bobbin until it reaches the edge of the stopper. With our bobbin wound, we push it back to release it, take it off the pin and cut the thread. To insert a front loading bobbin, first we remove the bobbin case from the machine. There's a little hinged handle that we can pull up, grab hold of and pull the case out. We take our bobbin 
and we hold it with the thread coming away in an anti-clockwise direction. We take our bobbin case and we insert our bobbin into the case. We bring our thread through the slot near this screw and pull it down into this large slot and you should hear it ping into place. the outside of the case facing us, we have our thread coming to the right of this little hook here. And we slot our bobbin in so that our hook slots into this notch here. And the centre of the bobbin goes onto this little pin. We leave the drawer open until we bring up the bobbin thread. To insert a top loading bobbin, we take the lid off the bobbin case by pulling this little lever. We take our bobbin, with the thread coming off in an anti-clockwise direction. Place the bobbin into the case. And we pull our thread through this notch that's facing the front. And we draw the thread clockwise until it slips into this notch. We pull the thread towards the back until we have about 6 inches. We put the cover back on and we're ready to thread the machine. We make sure that our needle is in the highest position. We take our thread and corresponding spool holder and place these on the spool pin. And most machines come with a handy numbering system showing you in which order you thread your machine and they're all threaded in very much the same way. We bring our thread under this first hook, which is our thread guide. Not all machines have this, but both of mine do. We bring it under the hook, and you should hear it ping into place. Next, we come under this hook at the top of our machine. Next, we bring the thread down through this groove along the top and front of the machine. We then bring our thread around the bottom to the left and up along the left groove. And at the top, we come to the right side of the lever, hook it around, and back down the groove to the left. And once we reach the bottom, we want to bring our thread under this little hook at the top of the needle. Now we can thread our needle. And that's our upper thread threaded. Machines are mostly threaded the same way, although my heavy duty machine does have an extra step. We begin the same way. We make sure that our needle is in the highest position. We put our thread on the spool pin. Coming under this first hook, under the second hook, down through the groove, around, back up to the next hook, over the hook, back down. And this is where we have our extra step. At the bottom of the groove, we have an extra hook. We bring the thread behind. And behind this final hook above the needle. And then we thread our needle. If you have trouble threading your needle, you can always use the built in needle threader. And you should find a small lever by your needle, push it down as far as it will go, and it will automatically swing into the threading position just behind the needle. We bring our thread down to the left. We come under and around the hook, making a loop. Now we come to the hook to the right of the needle, bring it underneath, and we release the lever, 
And now it's pulled our thread through the eye of the needle. Now the last thing we need to do is bring up the bobbin thread. We hold onto the machine thread that we've just threaded. And turning the hand wheel run revolution. We pull on the thread and it brings up the bobbin thread. We pull those both through the slot on the presser foot and towards the back. With the bobbin thread raised, we can now shut the door and put our machine back together. Both of these machines have many dials for stitch length, stitch style and tension. On a computerised machine, the stitch length, width and style is shown on this screen and they can be selected by using these buttons. You will find you still have the same tension dial on the top of the machine. The stitch length dial has a few settings. The numbers correlate to millimetres. Number 1 is 1 millimetre, number 2 is 2 millimetres and so on. Both my machines go up to 4, but some machines go all the way up to 7. One for lightweight fabrics, such as cotton or organza. We can set it to 2mm for medium weight fabrics, such as satin or jersey. And 3 for heavier fabrics, such as denim. We can turn it down to 0 for doing buttonholes. And up to a higher settings for doing gathering or tacking. We also have this symbol, which we can use to set the blue stitches shown on our stitch dial. Our stitch dial we can set to buttonhole, straight stitch, zigzag stitch and a few others. We also have a similar stitch length dial on the heavy duty but we can select more options from the stitch dial. Either selecting blue or red stitches. On this machine we change the width of the zigzag stitch by lining up the dial with the widths indicated. On the heavy duty machine, we set our dial to zigzag stitch. We have a separate dial for stitch widths, which we can set between 0 and 6 mm. On some machines, we can also change the position of the needle, either centre or to the right. You might want to set it to the right if you want to stitch closely to the edge. On the heavy duty machine we have a separate dial for choosing needle position. We can have centre as well as left and right. Before we start sewing any garment we should always do a test. So save any scraps of fabrics that we have left over from cutting out patterns. And we sew our scraps together using the same layers that we would use when sewing our garment. I do test in both straight stitch and zigzag stitch and we make sure that our stitch length suits our fabric and that our tension is correct. Start the test with the tension dial on its middle setting. We set our stitch length and stitch style. On the metal plate of the machine we can see that we have lines and some of them are numbered and they appear every 5mm. So this first mark out from the foot is 10mm and 15, then 20, and we use this as a guide when we're sewing, keeping the edge of our fabric along the designated line. The seam allowance is usually around 10 millimeters. We line our fabric up with the 10 millimeter mark. We come underneath the presser foot, lowering the foot using the lever at the back. We make sure our needle is in its highest position. We push down on the foot pedal and we sew along our fabric. Do not tug on the fabric or try to pull it through. The machine can do that on its own. With the feed dog, these little teeth underneath the needle are what feed the fabric through. So there's no need for you to push or pull on the fabric. Just guide it and keep it in line with your chosen marker. To stop sewing, we release the pedal. When we're done, we bring our needle back to its highest position. We lift up the presser foot lever. We pull our work away from the machine. And on the side of the machine is a thread cutter. There's a tiny razor within this slot, which we use to cut the thread once we've done sewing. Both my machines have this on the side. 
but sometimes you may find it somewhere on the plate. With the test done, we can check our tension. If we need to test again, we can. And for each new stitch line, we can use our old stitch line as a new marker, keeping it in line with the edge of the foot. Our stitches should be even on the front and back, so none of the bobbin thread should be showing on the top, and the top thread should not be showing underneath. On a zigzag stitch with the correct tension, we should only see the top thread on the top and mostly bobbin thread on the back and you should just see a tiny amount of the upper thread on the point of each zigzag. If the bobbin thread is being pulled up to the top, then your tension is too tight. Keep turning your tension dial down to a lower number until you find the correct tension. If we see excessive amounts of upper thread underneath being pulled down, then our tension is too loose. Turn the dial to a higher number until you find the correct tension. And keep testing until you find the correct tension. For stronger seams, we can do something called back tacking, where at the beginning and end of each row, we go back and forward to lock our stitches in place. Somewhere on the body of your machine, you will find a reverse lever, and this will reverse the direction of your machine for as long as you hold down the lever. We begin by sewing a few stitches. We push down our reverse lever, sew a few stitches going backwards, release the lever, and carry on sewing as normal. And at the end, we push down the reverse lever again to lock our thread in place. It's a stronger seam and does not want to pull apart. Here we can see back tacking compared to none. Without the back tacking, we can see it might be easier to pull a seam apart and to lose some threads. For the most part, we will be using the standard press of it, but sometimes we will want to change feet for doing buttonholes or zips. This machine has a plastic holder which we can easily pop the feet in and out of. To change the feet on this machine, we grab hold of the foot and just pull it towards us. On each foot we will find a small bar. We line this bar up with the notch and push the foot into the slot. On most machines, the foot is released by pushing a lever at the back. And to replace our foot, we line our bar up with the notch, lifting the lever, and once the foot is in place, let go of the lever. There are different kinds of needle for dealing with different kinds of fabric. The larger the size, the heavier the fabric or thicker the layers it can deal with. You can find size guides online if you're unsure. Most sewing machines will come with standard needles, which are quite fine or with universal needles. There are also jersey needles for stretch fabrics, and you can get heavy duty or jeans needles for the heavier fabrics, such as denim. It's recommended to change the needle after about eight hours of sewing. To change the needle, I usually bring down the presser foot, which gives me a little more room. We take our little screwdriver, and we slot it into this pin above the needle. And turning it in an anti-clockwise direction, we loosen it. Once it's a little loose, we can do it by hand until the needle comes out easily. The top of our needle isn't completely round. One side is flat. This is the side that goes towards the back. To replace our needle, we hold the flat side towards the back and push it up into the slot. We then tighten our screw finishing off of the screwdriver. So now we have all the basics we need to get started. There are quite a few more things to cover, but we'll do that in later videos, otherwise this will end up being over an hour long and no one wants to sit through that. In between learning stitches, I will also release videos for troubleshooting and learning to maintain the machine. If you don't want to miss any of those exciting instalments, don't forget to subscribe and ding the little bell. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And you can also follow me on social media at Sandy Creature. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!